Hello, first order. Uh, first off, I want to say thank you everybody so much for supporting me through this little adventure. Uh, I'm so sorry I couldn't get more of these done and out to people. I wish I'd started it earlier, but hopefully they all make it to you guys before the movie and we're able to make this, uh, make this happen. We've all done crazier stuff before, I'm sure. You've all built the Anovis kit, so... <laughs> all right. Hi, everybody. Okay. All right. Um, I've got everything that should be in your box here in front of me. But as well as just start with, uh, with the handle. This is mostly ready to go, but there's flashing along the bottom side, I'm sure you can see. You might want to give it just a general uh, general sand all over because the surface might not take paint as well without it. Uh, I tried to belt sand the back end here where it was open flat. There's probably bubbles there, there's probably bubbles along here. Um, I'd say give it a little Bondo work. Definitely sand the back end around here so it's not a hard edge. Um, the holes should be mostly ready to go. You probably won't need to do too much to those. But uh, once you've given that a good sand, I, I've already got another one going. Just spray, let's say spray this black, spray this black, and we'll mask off the white after that. I'm going to get to cleaning up the arms next. Should have the four back form pieces of the arms. Now, I tried to trim, I trimmed some of it. They need a lot more trimming. So, can we see well enough the, uh, the edge there? Um, you want to cut along this edge as close as you can. about there. We're actually going to cut this whole piece here right off completely. So on the inside you want to just cut so you completely eliminate the line. Cutting like so right on the inside of that line there. We want it to be flat at that point, where it has to join up with the other side. It doesn't need to be particularly neat, it's going to get covered over by one of the bands. Let's trim up the other side. Now, you could do that by hand, but I like to do it with the Dremel, because you can get a cleaner curve easier. that inner edge as you see fit. I'm doing a very rough, quick assembly today. So you'll want something like that. You'll see this one's a bit chipped. I tried really hard not to send any of those to you guys. So I hope at the worst all you're going to have to deal with is a little bit of minor cracking. Because these were, these were pulled pretty fast. Didn't have a lot of time. Well, you know, you know. All right. Next is the arm, the upper arms, lower arms, whichever. When everyone's closed. What we want to do on this one is trim. We're keeping this lip, but we want to trim the inside of it. So, suppose you could either just cut all the way around the outside 
and you lose a bit of lip, not that it really matters. Or you can just trim out a bunch of it. Again, take the Dremel, clean it up that way. And if there are any pieces of this are really, really shitty I want to upgrade after the movie, I'll, I'll have upgrade parts, probably pull them out of actual ABS and take the time to do a, a not thin rush job. But I want to rework all the masters when I have time after the movie and try to actually make these as good as possible. And these are all pulled from all the rejected leftover parts that I have, so hopefully all your kits should be nicer than this one. But we are going to a little hot glue on there. Little, uh, little E6000 with my E6000 gun, because that's totally that. I'm just going to glue the arms together like so, try and get them straight and on a flat level surface. And these ones should be more or less good to go pretty quickly here. That'll do. They should be flush along here. I don't know how well that's going to work out on all of them. This one is cut poorly. It doesn't really matter on this one because this gap is going to be covered over. So it doesn't need to be too clean. So now the arms are assembled. They should be fairly durable. I'm going to take these to paint. We're using just the, uh, the gloss white that you're all familiar with. <laughs> Hopefully you've got some left over. Okay. So. Those are in paint. Come back with our um, our handle with the black areas pre-painted. I'm going to mask off the black. I found this a little easier than doing it the other way around. Hope the white paint doesn't leak under this too much because we all know how great that white paint is. Everybody's favorite. Now, references are limited about the handle details. So I'm imagining that this is probably not going to be the most accurate. And when I rework the master after the movie, I want to try and put a little more detail into it. A little a little more correct. I'm trying to offer a, an upgrade program for those interested. Now, that's not the nicest masking job, but I'm sure you can all do better. I'll probably fix it with a Sharpie later. I'm more interested in just getting this together. And it's quite likely that many of you will be building it on a short timeline too. I'm trying to make this as close to your experience as possible. <laughs>
All right, black there, black there. I'm assuming this return edge is white. This goes to paint too. So that's painting. That might take a while. That paint is garbage. I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. I know you, you all do too. Okay, we'll work on the main shaft in the meantime. So you should all have this uh, acrylic rod with the holes in it on the end. Now, how this goes together, this is a bit in development, but you have these custom-made half dowels because you can't buy half-round dowel anywhere, apparently. I tried to special order it in and they screwed that up. So now I'm not sure all of these are level. I'm not sure all of these aren't warped. I know some of them are. Um, you could probably do like you did with the uh, Anovas clips and heat it gently to try and straighten it out. Um, you can try and trust the glue to do it or you can just uh, sand it, leave it. <laughs> There's a few things you can do with that. First though, I have this tint included in your kit. I'm just going to get a paper towel, wipe this clean because we don't want dust under the tint. This is, you, you can install lights inside here because these are, from what we can tell, supposed to light up red. Then hopefully they should show up through the tint. There is an adhesive layer on here. It's just really hard to peel back, but I swear it's there. Yes. There we go. There's still paint on my hands. That's good. All right. So we have our adhesive layer. We have dust on this again. These tubes pick up static like nobody's business. So. Cleaning the tube very nicely. Put the tube on the tint. If you put a little bit of water under here, it makes the process a little easier to position the tint. The most amazing ever, but it's the sides without the holes that matter. The sides with the holes don't matter so much. I just want to apply this first because it doesn't stick overly well to the acrylic. So, well, that side didn't work out too horribly. We want to have the, the other pieces glued on top of this to help hold it in place. And you can just trim it up. Put it in position. Trim it back a bit from the ends. And there's your tinted tube. <laughs> Again, you don't need to be too clean with these because we're not going to see them. That's good enough. Okay. 
this tube fits through this hole. Eventually, I tried to make it a pretty snug fit. Because we don't really want this going anywhere. I did test all the ones that went out. I didn't test this one, so you won't have to do this on yours. You got your tube in there. These pieces will fit right in front of the tube. You want to get the tube as straight as possible. It has a little wiggle room. As straight and even as possible. Now, I'm going to glue these on. There might be a bit of a depression under here. You'll probably, you can fill that with Bondo if you want. Uh, I'm just going to use a very gap filling glue. Some of these might need to be sanded, but I hope not. I tried to not have that be a thing. But we are just going to glue those on the end here. What I'm actually going to do now, I'm going to mask off the area we just tinted because we don't really want to get anything on that tint. And we're probably going to paint this as one unit. So, masked off the important parts. There's a gap there. Um, there will probably be some of those. Fill that with uh, putty of your choice. Now I'm going to attach the crooked beam at this point. I'm just going to put some glue on it, bend it into position, and probably tape it down for a minute. Okay, so that's on and that's not the straightest. This one's a lot more straight. I'm going to do the same with the other much straighter piece. And then we're going to figure out how to correct that warp. I would recommend trying to heat and bend them straight rather than trying to correct it after the fact, but there we go. Both pieces are on there now. Okay, arms. I have included this uh, sheet, two sheets of styrene bands. They're pre-scored, so all you need to do is snap them out. So after you snap out the styrene bands, what I've been doing is curling them a bit by hand, otherwise they tend to warp the, uh, the hips when you glue them down. So, you know, it doesn't take much, just some gently rolling them. I tried heating them, they, uh, they curled, which is not good. So, you got your staring bands there. Um, most of you do not have the pre-cut vinyl because technical difficulties, night of trying to get them out of the post office, and I just couldn't make it happen. So I've included a piece of vinyl for all of you, and what you'll probably want to do is for each each arm just put it on and then manually trim it back and 
I'm sorry, I'm really sorry, but you'll still end up with the same result. You could even fold it over too, kind of hide the white edge, but you want, you want some hanging off too. Line it up on the band. Get a bit of glue, a little bit of glue on the band. There are raised sections on the arm, you'll see, and an indent on the inside to help you line up the bands and the vinyl. Because these are supposed to wrap all the way around, and the black does carry through the inside. This one's slightly too long quite sure how that happened. I'm going to trim it to fit. My glue seems to have dried already. Be careful using super glue on styrene. We line up everything inside. We trim that back so you don't see the seam line. That's how you get your bands on the outside. So this is the top of the handle. This one's got some problems with being disjointed. I tried to not have that happen. I hope none of yours do. But I'm just going to sand this around. I'm thinking of putting a button for the lights on the top of this. But I'll probably do that after we have a more accurate version, because again, no real references for what this is supposed to look like. Gorgeous. Work of art. This one should be pretty much ready to go. This one actually cast pretty well. So I'm going to take these both and they're going to get silver. Use the buttons. They need to be painted a gloss black. I'm gonna go do that. Done. Arms done. Banding on the arms. It does go all the way around inside. That's not good. Honestly, I haven't figured out how to fix that yet. So if you figure out a way to fix that, perfect. I'm just hoping no one will see it. Handle. I have a piece of wood dowel, a piece of chrome vinyl. You take your chrome vinyl and your, let's see, uh, yeah, that's good enough. Take your chrome vinyl, wrap it around your handle, and you have an instant metal rod. This is the trickier part. I have, this is heat shrink rubber tubing. There is some writing on it. Um, It's not the prettiest way to deal with it. Do with the writing as you will. It's hard to cut, so what I want to do for the cutting is 
I've got another piece of random tube. Find something round you can put in it and bulk it up until you can nicely, snugly fit your piece of shrink wrap over the tube. And what I'm going to do then is using one of these strips as a guide. So, I have my rings now. I only have five, which is wrong. Mm -hmm. 